Hi, in this short video we're going to take a look at some of the enhancements to Revit 2024.2 but we really have a deeper focus on our new features of Dynamo that comes with this release. Let's begin by taking a look at the current home screen. So this is how Revit's home screens look for the last couple of releases but you'll now notice that we can switch on the new Revit home screen. So what this does is you can see here that we can actually now have a list view or we can switch to a grid view. On the right hand side we can also filter what we're seeing. So at the minute I'm actually seeing families and models but if I just want to see the families I can filter those or just the models. You'd also see here that we can actually filter by the date modified as well. We've also got a searching option up here so if I want to go and find all my models for example associated with Naviate I can just go ahead and search for those models. So I think this is a big improvement to the Revit home screen. OK, let's switch back into the main interface of Revit. Have a look at a couple of other enhancements. So in Revit 2024, we saw the appearance of the dark theme with its first iteration. And if we just have a look at that, if I go to the View tab and I actually select the Canvas theme and we put that into Dark theme, this is what we would see. So Autodesk have now further enhanced this and actually if I open up one of these schedules in here you'll now see that the schedules also now use the dark theme. So that's uh, quite a nice addition. The main thing I wanted to show you here was some of the new features of Dynamo. So what I'm going to do here is just switch across to the Manage tab and we'll start up Dynamo. So now that Dynamo is running we'll create a new document. Let's begin by looking at some of the significant new features here. So I'll begin by opening up the display shelf and you can see now we have a menu for charts. What we'll do here is we'll put together a simple Dynamo script to perhaps extract all the flaws and then we'll look at how these charts actually work. So let's begin by doing that. I'm going to start by using the enhanced searching in here. So I want to go and find categories in here. Um, I want to get all the flaws so we'll go ahead and do a little search for that and now we want all elements so again I can just type in the word all and you can see now the searching working really well so we've now got all of those flaws and now what we want to do is we want to filter that by the family type so I'll just use the node library for this so we're going to elements we'll go to family types and here I want to actually perhaps group this by the actual name of the family type so here I'm actually going to use the family name and here we'll do a group by function so again I'll just type in group here that will be my function and then I'll pass in those flaws and now we can see that grouping starting to work so to help us actually see what's happened here we'll bring out the name again and now what we'll do is we'll have a look at those names in relation to this okay so we can now see we've got slab 450 300 and then the steel deck and then 250 at the end so now that we've got that, let's actually go back to the display here and then we'll look at charts. I'm going to begin perhaps by looking at a pie chart. So over here you can see that we have to put an input in and this is basically a string. We then have some values which are going to be doubles and then we have colours. So perhaps what I want to do here is actually see, let's have a look, let's check the perhaps the area of each of these slabs. So Again, I'm going to do a bit of a search in here and I want to actually get parameter. So we'll use the search for that. We'll actually put that list in there and then I'm going to use a code block and we said we would look at this on area. Okay, and now we can see we've got all those areas in there. Now, what's going to actually happen here is I want to take the first element of each of these type names in here and then what I'm going to want is the sum of all of these areas in this case. So let's just uh, do a search for sum. And what we'll do is we'll actually add up all those areas for each of those um, elements. So there it is. OK, we'll organise these a little bit better over here. OK, and what I want to do is actually get the first item from each of these uh, elements in the list. So we'll do that. OK, and we want to use levels in here. Okay, so that's now going to be my labels. Then we can actually put in our values. And straight away here now, we can actually see the output in that pie chart. So quite interactive. You can see as you move over these, it actually uh, brings out each of the segments as well, which is quite nice. Um, let's actually do this by volume. So we'll change this to volume. 
Okay, and again now we can see that we've got the volumes out over here. Okay, so that's like the pie chart. Let's now have a look at perhaps a bar chart. And we'll now do the bar chart. So that's going to be the same set of labels in there. But this time we actually want to see perhaps a separate bar for each of those volumes. So we'll put that directly in here. And now we can see the bar chart over here. So again, I can interact with this. I can move over these elements and it will give me the actual values. A bit like you'd see actually with Power BI. Okay, now one of the other good things with this is actually we can output this. So you can see I can actually export the chart as an image. So let's do that. We'll go and save that away. And then I'll open that in the image viewer and you can now see that pie chart. Another nice new function was around the Python editor. So I'm just going to go and do a search for that now. So we'll bring up the Python script tool. And of course now we're actually using Python 3, which is obviously quite good. Let's just open up the Python script editor in here. And you know, just in case you've missed this from the previous release, we can now hold down the control key and we can zoom in and out here to zoom the actual text, which is quite useful. Now another really cool thing with this is you can see now we can actually dock that on the right hand side and that's really useful because obviously as you're starting to actually write some Python script in here you can obviously still interact with the graph and actually have a look at the various different inputs and outputs so that's really quite nice and when you're done with that you can click on the same icon here to actually bring that back out as a floating window and of course you can maximize that and, and minimize that and so on. So I hope that was useful. That was just a couple of uh, enhancements in Revit and obviously some of these new functionalities in Dynamo. See you in the next video.